Derek. What? I like your hat. Hey, I like your hat too. You can take a selfie because we're... Nobody nerds. can see my hat. Oh, there it is. So we are in Indianapolis on our Saturday morning run. And we're just coming up on the driver parade. It starts in about 15 minutes. So another one of those cool indie weekend traditions. I think we'll check it out for a little bit, but honestly, I kind of don't really want to be out here on the streets in a big old giant crowd right now. We'll take a peek and then finish our run. The Indy 500 truly is the greatest spectacle in racing. The parade, the people, the patriotism, carb day, are full of great things to watch. Derek's favorite? Thing one and thing two. Mine, the float with the military, and Lee Greenwood song playing, God Bless the USA. How long have we been here? Um, a little over an hour. What do you think? Oh, no, it's an extreme test of my patience. Derek wasn't thrilled to be watching, though. We did get to cheer for our friend and Derek's co-driver, James Davison. You know, we're here at this restaurant. You're our server. We ask you if you're a racing fan, and you're kind of like, I don't know. And it turns out you're an engineer. Uh -huh. Like, you studied race car engineering. A little bit, yeah. More biomed now, but yeah, a little bit. So talk about what the, what the passion for race cars is and why you wanted to go down that path. Oh, uh, with the engineering? Um, yeah, on maybe more the engineering side of it. It's, I think it's neat. It's great watching the teams go, but it's, for me, it's very interesting to find those tiny little differences that will make or break a race. You know, like we had a team in and talking about how a loose lug nut at the end changes how they reset up the whole car and re-rig it, or it's like a couple ounces difference in fuel, as well as, like you said, the engineers kind of talking back and forth with the race car drivers. So for me, what I get to speak with people and hear about the intricacies and nuances, it's more than just meeting great friends at the track and watching a good race. It's just watching people with a big passion and putting their lives in each other's hands and just having a good time. Racing, like racing does it, it draws amazing people together. We then enjoyed a night on the town with our sponsor and host for the race. And of course, we continued to put our Fast Life stamp on the weekend. And with the hum of some McLarens, race day came early. Thanks to the Andretti team and McLaren, we received the world's greatest treat watching one of the greatest racing drivers, Fernando Alonso, with all the insider information we could ever need. The craziness begins. We are on pit lane today uh, for the 101st running of the Indy 500. And we're walking right over to uh, Fernando's stall over here. And there's lots of whistles. There's a lot of whistling. So you'll see they got all the magic information right here. They got the, the weather. They'll be able to monitor the car. I don't know in this series if they're allowed to make changes remotely to the car or not, but basically everything they need to know is right there. We'll see uh, you know, a spare you know, front nose and wing. Hopefully he won't have to use that. All kinds of fresh sets of uh, Firestone tires. Uh, this is a, it's, it's amazing to be down here for an event like this. It's, it's crazy. It's huge. Uh, that's the fueling system, which is a little bit more advanced than, than what we have. And I honestly can't tell you exactly how it works other than the fact that there's this, they put it in the car, and it puts fuel in in like less than six seconds. So this is how they start the cars. It goes into the back and fires it up. It's amazing to see how much more grip there is where the rubber's laid down versus where it's not. So different than our cars that have, you know, like five lug nuts. A different tool. This is theirs. This is one single unit. So that's how they put the tires on and off. 
Yeah, just one, one single unit rather than five individual or six individual lug nuts. That's how they're able to do it in, you know, five or six seconds. I was wondering, during the pit stop challenge, I was like, how are they doing that? Yeah, that just one. How often do they change the tires? I'm guessing like maybe every 20 minutes or so. I mean, they're, they're designed to be really fast for a short period of time and certain cars or drivers will manage them better than others and it'll become a big part of the strategy. Then it was off to the garage area. We could not believe it when we saw Sebastian Bourdais at the track to wish his team well just two days after his surgery. And a garage trip would not be complete without a Mario Andretti sighting. in both the uh, McLaren Honda Andretti Suite and also Andretti Motorsport. You can please gather around and please join me in welcoming the architect of McLaren's return to the Indy 500 with their iconic Andretti brand, Mr. Zach Brown. <laughs> Zach, good morning. Thank you for uh, joining us. How are you feeling today? Uh, now that I know it's morning, good. <laughs> So, when you took the role of McLaren, did you ever expect that within a year you'd be standing here at the Indy 500, having brought McLaren back to the Indy? Uh, I was dreaming about it, but I didn't think 2017 was uh, possible at all. But I did have in the back of my mind, it'd be great to see McLaren go back to uh, Indianapolis in uh, some unusual circumstances about our, uh, how we're doing in Formula One and Fernando's desire. Uh, to race here, or our desire to race here, and so it all kind of came together uh, very seamlessly. So it's been, uh, it's been great. It's been a great month. And it's been the biggest and most disruptive announcement in motorsport of the last year. I mean, has it exceeded even your expectations? Uh, yeah, I, I think it, uh, it, it has. We knew it was going to be big news, but it's been uh, jolly news. And it's been great because everyone's been so excited about it. It's such a good story. Normally, things that are giant, giant news have a degree of uh, issues with him, and this one's just a very positive story. He's done an unbelievable job, everyone at uh, McLaren and Dreddy have done an unbelievable job. The fans have been great, so I think everyone uh, is super excited to see uh, see this race. And how did the project actually start? You, you mentioned you had a kind of idea, but it all coming together for this year. How did it all happen? Uh, so when I started, I kind of had a list of things I'd love to see McLaren race to, but uh, given our challenges, I thought it was best to keep Shot. So I didn't get a, a running focus on Formula One, and uh, which of course we are doing, but we're a big organization and uh, we've raced multiple forms of uh, racing many times in the uh, in the past, including the year twice. So I, I kind of joked around with Fernando uh, preseason because uh, most of the Formula One drivers I don't think would be uh, brave enough to come do what Fernando's done, and um, he joked back. So um, a lot of the others have said not a chance in hell. So uh, that wasn't uh, uh, Fernando's response, because I've kind of gone up and down for a little bit right now, checking with who wouldn't do it. And uh, Fernando's one of the brave ones. And um, so we, we had a chat, and then uh, we spoke again. We said, let's do dinner in, in China, just to kind of catch up. And I went, yeah, I want to talk to you about that Indy thing. And then I went, ooh, it's really serious. So then I got pretty serious in my mind as to whether there was a way to do it. Um, and there was, and then it required me going to the executive committee, uh, which are my bosses, the shareholders of the team, and I literally laid it out with uh, Jonathan Neal, uh, who was sitting next to me. I said, you might think I'm on drugs. Because <laughs> 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 I didn't know what type of response I would get. And they immediately got it and loved it, because they're, they're racers. 
So then it just all started to gather momentum. I called uh, Mark Miles, the uh, chief executive of IndyCar, because he wanted to operate very quietly. So we had enough McLaren, Honda, Fernando rumors going around. I certainly didn't want this one in the mix. Uh, quickly uh, arranged a deal with Michael uh, and the whole Andretti team, which has been fantastic. And not only is it giant news, the fact that we surprised everyone with it made it uh, that much uh, sweeter. So it's a bit of a long story, but that's how we got to where we are today. Definitely. And as you say, it's to return uh, McLaren to IndyCar, but McLaren working with Andretti Motorsport as well. I mean, it's been fantastic. We've been here for obviously a month working with the team. They've been incredible. Has it been for you as well? It's been a perfect marriage. Uh, you know, I think because you know, Michael and a lot of people on the team and Mario uh, come from Form Formula One, right? Mario who I started in a variety of places, but Formula One being one of those, culturally, they've just opened the doors and, and we've made ourselves at, uh, at home and we've commented about it. So Michael's been uh, outstanding. Mario's been great. We brought him to the parent. Uh, Johnny Rutherford, who won the 500 for us. So it's kind of ticked all the really cool boxes. And um, I can't think of a better partner. Very, uh, very happy with, uh, with Michael. And uh, you've actually been in Monaco this weekend, so you landed from Monaco uh, this morning. I mean, you couldn't get two more different kind of races, really, from Monaco to come here for the Indy 500. What makes the Indy 500 so special to you? Well, it was pretty cool walking up and down, and the paddock knew I was coming. I felt like I was at NASA, because so they were like, goodbye! And I felt like I was going to the moon. <laughs> and uh, um, so it's been great. I'm, I you know, I lived in Indianapolis for, for 20 years. Um, I'm a Formula One junkie, I'm an IndyCar junkie, I'm a sports car junkie, I like uh, most forms of motorsport. And so to come back, and uh, this is probably my 10th, 11th live Indy 500 in my 20, 25th that I've watched, uh, to come back and be uh, part of the show uh, it is a lot of fun, it feels very, uh, very special, and just uh, so pleased with how well Fernando is doing. He has driven uh, everything perfectly, and he has loved it. He's one day at a time. He's very focused. I saw him this morning, and uh, he's, he's got his game face on, so I think he's going to have a, a great race. And you've uh, put a great team around him for support. He's got Johnny Rutherford, who you just mentioned, uh, Gilles de Ferran, who won in 2003. How much do you think that support's helped him as well this month? He, he's he's uh, been a great student, and everything he could do to learn quicker and learn more, he's done. So we wanted to surround him with some people that have... Uh, a great track records around here, sorry for the pun, and so uh, he's enjoyed that. He's watched so many races and in cars and telemetry and been in simulators. He's just trying to consolidate, you know, six months of preparation into a month, and uh, his dedication has been um, you know, out, uh, outstanding. And it's been good to see uh, Mario as excited as he is, and he said something uh, funny I had from a journalist the other day. He said, hey, have you talked to Mario about doing Le Mans, which is the one race that... Uh, Mario has a one, and he said, well, Mario wants to do it with Michael and Marco, but he thinks Michael might be too old. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the other reasons why this this, uh, this returning to, to Indy with Fernando has been so disruptive, is because other drivers are talking about wanting to compete in other categories, and of course Fernando really is talking about the Triple Crown. So what makes that so special in motorsport? I think the you know three biggest races in the world, are, you know, you got to include fourth if you start expanding the NASCAR, but kind of from a road racing, open wheel uh, uh, viewpoint, Le Mans, Monaco, and, and Indianapolis are the three to win. Only one have, uh, has done it, Graham Hill, uh, last rookie uh, to leave Monaco to come race at uh, India, I believe, was Jim Clark in '65 and, and won. Um, and you know, Fernando's got some time uh, to do uh, to do Le Mans. I think uh, driving as well as he's ever driven, if not better. Um, and so hopefully we can get a, a, a victory here, and then uh, I guess we'll have to figure out how the ball works. <laughs> and do you think we'll be returning to uh, to Indy next year as well? I'd like to return to Indy next year. This has been a great uh, experience for us. I want to make sure we uh, review it post race. You know, so far it's ticked all the boxes, um, but this place is tough. Uh, for 500 miles, and we want to make sure we uh, leave tonight with the same big smiles we have on our face now, which I'm sure we will, and then if uh, that all uh, works, then I'm sure we will be back. Well, we're looking forward to an incredible race. We've got an amazing view here from the suites. We've also got uh, three-time winner, Johnny Rutherford, coming up later on to join us. We'd just like to do a bit of a toast with you, Zach, just to uh, celebrate 
I return to Indy it's 500. Like in Monica. <laughs> <laughs> We've drunk all the rosé already, so we're now onto this. But uh, everybody, please join me and wish the team uh, all the best of luck for today's race with Zach. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Can I ask one quick question? Yeah, of course. You commented about him being brave enough to come do this. Like, what aspects were you really referring to about that? Is it like a putting your reputation on the line type of thing, or just the? Yeah, well, I think it's it's physical, um, sure. and, and definitely reputation wise, right? He he knows the entire world is watching him. You know, the entire world of motor racing. So if he didn't go out and put on a good show. Um, you know, no one wants to be uh, embarrassed as a, uh, an athlete. So I think that was even the braver decision is to you know put his uh, reputation out there, and I think it's worked out unbelievable because I think everyone thinks this guy's amazing. So, uh, but that was brave to put that out there, and uh, you know that's the racer. Thank you. Welcome. Watching Garrett holding Fernando's steering wheel was like watching a kid at Christmas. I wish I could give you a better description of what they all do. I have a lot less buttons on my wheel. I have one that gives me a drink, one where I can talk to the team, and I can control like a fuel map, ABS, traction control, and that's really about it. He's got a lot going on right there. It fits. It feels just right. I think I can do this. <laughs> You guys tell them which buttons to push, right? And when? You guys tell them which buttons to push, when? And yeah, yeah. It's good to go. Oh, you can hold it. A lot going on there. How is this experience versus when we were sitting maybe up there -ish, I think, last time? I'd say this is much better. I have rosé, I have a seat, I have shade, I have a TV screen, I have a perfect view of all the celebrities and the people and the pit lane here. It's absolutely the best seats in the house, I think. So we're up here at the top of the McLaren suite, we've got our private grandstand area, and the view is, it's way better than what we've had before, don't you think? Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you can see multiple turns. The one I'm most excited about is turn one, so we can see the whole start. And the finish, or the result of the start, right around the corner from the top of the bleachers here. Exactly. Yeah, it's super cool, because we can see the whole straightaway. You can see turn one and then the, the shoot on the way to turn two. I mean, you can vaguely see the back of the track and it just shows you how big this place is. Like, look at the grandstand over there. Yeah. Like, there's like massive miles away, of, I think. And there's like a massive amount of people and in And then it. we can see the exit to turn four all the way onto the straight. So it's, uh, I have to stand here the whole time, I think. I'm not going to want to leave, that's for sure. The masses were gathered near Fernando's car. I could tell this was going to be a race to remember. But we couldn't have predicted what was going to happen, especially with James Davison. This might be Fernando's first rolling start. He's probably wondering, well, how the heck does this work? Oh, I'm sure he's been studying. Can't wait to see it. Scott Dixon had a terrible crash early in the race. Fortunately, he's okay. Two of our favorite drivers lost their engines, including Fernando Alonso. 
The Hondas were pushed to the limit. Crashes took others out of the race. I started to think maybe James had a chance. James's passes were perfectly James, aggressive and on the edge. We couldn't believe he was pulling some of them off. His restarts were amazing. Soon, he had made it to the top 10, then second place. racing craziness. James is in second place. And I have no idea what's happening with fuel or any of that we can't hear. Suddenly, he was leaving. I about lost my, you know what. And with just a little tap on the back of his car, he found himself caught up into a crash with multiple cars, which took him out of the race. Just like that. The Indy 500 dream to win was put to an end, at least for this time. But his performance was amazing, one we will not forget. There is nothing better than the gift of a memorable experience. Thank you, Castrol. Thank you, Andretti, McLaren, and James Davison. Once again, there's a lot of things about this place that are way different than Monaco. These are some of those things. So next time you're at Indy, see if you can find a Fast Life sticker. So yeah, we're here uh, with our good friend Josh, our Uber driver, and he just had the most amazing story as we were wrapping up. Indianapolis and racing and how things go here. So tell us your story again. Yeah, so I was doing an Uber trip for this woman and she had a little bit of an English accent. And so we were just kind of talking, I was taking her over to the speedway and uh, we were passing this Taco Bell. And I said to her kind of jokingly, I was like, hey, don't make sure you don't go to that Taco Bell. Uh, a couple of the race car drivers got robbed there at gunpoint. And she was like, oh yeah, that was my husband. He was getting me food. <laughs> So, um, basically it's kind of her fault and I asked her, I was like, so I should tell the papers that this was your fault. She's like, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Thank you for following Fast Life TV. Please subscribe for weekly updates about our new content and share us with your friends.